Today we spent most of the class analyzing this system. We have a 100 gram mass suspended from a series of four rubber bands and it oscillates at the frequency you see here. And we can count the frequency. Okay, uh, I just counted uh, watching the uh, time display on my screen here and got about 10 oscillations in 10 seconds. Now, we analyze the system in many different ways. and We want to look at the relationships that govern that oscillation. Now, first of all, uh, this is a approximate simple harmonic motion situation where we have uh, net force. Uh, I didn't write this down. I'm going to have to write this very close to the top here. I uh, don't really have a good place to write it. Um, let's see. I, I can't find a good place to write it. it I was going to write F net equals negative K uh, X and uh, that leads in any case directly to the differential equation uh, X double prime which is the acceleration is negative K over M times X. Um, if net force is negative K X then the acceleration which is the second derivative of the position function is that divided by the mass. So this differential equation simply depicts or simply represents the fact that the net force is negative kx. Now, uh, the solution to that, as we've discussed at some length, uh, can be written as x of t equals a cosine squared of k over mt plus a theta naught. Uh, simple harmonic motion, in general, uh, can be modeled by a uh, position function x of t equals a cosine omega t plus theta naught with omega equal to square root of k over m. Uh, and omega is here taking the value of the square root of k over m and potential energy 1 half kx squared. Again, we've established all that at some length. Now, the first time I did this, uh, I wasn't in a very good position. I counted eight oscillations in 10 seconds with a 100 gram mass <coughs> suspended from the uh, uh, rubber band chain. Um, and later, uh, I got 10 oscillations in 10 seconds, and I just got that again uh, so that uh, we have two, um, two counts, uh, eight oscillations per second, ten, uh, eight oscillations in 10 seconds, 10 oscillations in 10 seconds. Using the eight oscillations in 10 seconds, we'll come back to the revised count. Uh, we get period of oscillation 10 seconds over 8 cycles, which is 1.25 or 5 fourths second per cycle. And omega is 2 pi radians over the 1.25 seconds, uh, which comes out 8 pi over 5 or about 5 radians per second. And I uh, observed that the 5 radians per second is pretty approximate, uh, but it's very reasonable to make that approximation because our count is not accurate. It's accurate maybe to within, to within plus or minus one cycle in 10 seconds. Uh, so it's accurate to within maybe plus or minus 10 percent. And this is accurate to well within uh, plus or minus 10 percent if we base it on the count. Okay, so uh, what can we determine from this? Well, uh, we took some time to determine this, but omega is the square root of k over m so that k is m omega squared. And since we know the mass and omega, we can determine k. And we get k uh, through a very straightforward set of calculations equal to 2.5 newtons per meter based on the eight oscillations in 10 seconds. That would imply that if we change the um, weight on the oscillator, of course, if I remove the 50 gram mass or the half newton weight, the length of the rubber band changes. If I add it back, it changes back again. So we wanted to predict what would happen if we took the 0.5 kilogram, point, uh, the 50 gram, 0.05 kilogram mass off of the system. Well, you can 
plug that into an equation, and we have that uh, equation. But you can simply reason this out in terms of the meaning of this 2.5 newtons per meter. The 0.5 kilogram mass gives you an approximate weight of 0.5 newtons. So we change the weight by 0.5 newtons. We change the force stretching the rubber bands by 0.5 newtons. This says that it takes 2.5 newtons to change the length by a meter if the force of the rubber band is linear. And it's approximately linear. Uh, and the approximation is pretty good, but it's not perfectly linear. Um, if we have a linear response of the rubber band chain to the uh, stretching force, then uh, the change in the uh, 0.5 Newton change in the force, that's one fifth of the force that it takes to stretch this out by a meter. So we would expect the change in the length, the delta y uh, in this direction, to be one fifth of a meter, which is two tenths of a meter or 20 centimeters. Now we can plug that into equations, but it shouldn't be necessary to plug that into equations. The numbers are simple. And we should be familiar enough with the concept. We should have enough intuition about the concept not to have to use a formula to get this. However, uh, you should certainly verify this by using the formula. And we've used the formula. I'm not going to go into the details of, of the formula at this point, because people were able to use the formula pretty effectively. OK, so anyhow. We predict a change of 20 centimeters in the length. And uh, we hung the system here. And I predicted 20 centimeters using my hand span. I estimated a 20 centimeter distance, which is a little less than my hand span. Turns out I estimated that pretty well. But when we took the weight off, we actually got only about 3 quarters of that change in length. So uh, we went back and recounted. And this time we counted 10 oscillations in 10 seconds. And we asked what effect that would have on the uh, change in the length, the observed change in the length. And uh, carrying that through, of course, we spent some time on this in class. But carrying that through, what we did was we changed uh, omega by a factor of 5 fourths. We went from 8 count in 10 seconds to a 10 count. Uh, 10 eighths is 5 fourths. We increased omega by a factor of 5 fourths. Now, we could go through and recalculate all this with uh, an omega equal to uh, 10 cycles in 10 seconds is 1 cycle per second, which is pi radians per second, or six, uh, 2 pi radians per second, which is 6.28 radians per second. We go through and recalculate everything. but we can use the whole idea of variation of proportionality. If we have 5 fourths of the omega, what does that do to our estimate of k? Well, k is m omega squared, which comes from this basic relationship, easily solved for k. So we should change uh, the value of k by a factor of omega squared. If omega changes by factor 5 fourths, omega squared is going to change by factor 5 4 squared, which is 25 sixteenths. 25 sixteenths of 2.5 newtons per meter is going to give us about 4 newtons per meter, very close to 4 newtons per meter. So k is going to change by a factor of 25 sixteenths to 4 newtons per meter. What does that do to the uh, delta y that we estimate here? Well, if we've got 4 newtons per meter, and we have a change of force of 0.5 newtons, what does that do uh, to the uh, length? And what we easily calculate is, OK, it, this says that it takes 4 newtons to change the length by a meter. So if we change it by half a newton, that's going to be 1 eighth of uh, the force we need to change it by a meter. So it should change by an eighth of a meter. So that uh, write this a little smaller. Uh, delta y is one eighth of a meter, which gives us a revised 
calculation, an eighth of a meter is 12 and a half centimeters, round that to 13 centimeters. Uh, and we actually did that and came out, uh, well, uh, the third, we, we got, I think, about 17 centimeters when we measured the actual change in the length. Uh, that was lower than the 20 centimeter estimate we got based on the eight oscillations in 10 seconds. And uh, a fairly equal amount longer than the 13 centimeters we got with the 10 oscillation in 10 second count. Okay, so the idea here is simply that we need to uh, not only be able to use the equations, and of course if you can use the equations and the formulas, that's good. Uh, that's going to get you uh, full credit if you do it correctly. Uh, but we also want to have an intuitive grasp of how these quantities vary, of the fact that uh, K is proportional to the square of omega. So if you uh, have two different counts, you're going to get two different values of omega. And that's going to change K by the square of that ratio of the counts. It's going to revise the estimate of K, which is going to revise your estimate of how much the uh, length should change uh, when a certain amount of weight is taken off. Okay, that intuitive grasp is important in that it gives you a much more secure solution. Uh, you can look at how the equations work out and then you can uh, compare that to the way these quantities ought to change and uh, you simply have a more secure grasp of the situation if you can do this sort of reasoning.